Oh, hello there. How are you? I was just reading my book in front of my bookcase, as I often do. Okay, so it all began when, in my creative writing class, a student wrote a story um, that was deemed, that made another student feel uncomfortable. The story she wrote was a retelling of a Bible story. In this retelling, instead of fish, Jesus had a bunch of marijuana and handed out weed to all the sick and dying people. Everyone at the time was up in arms because of this story about Jesus and pot. It wasn't about Jesus and pot. I lost my job because of the way um, the school treated me, because of the administration, um, because of how it was dealt with, um, because of the way they treated the students, my other students. Uh, the story itself was really just a catalyst for all these other <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to use a word. Okay, hold on. Let me do that again. I taught for 10 years, eight of which were at Cleveland. During that entire time, I also ran various writing programs and had several publications. My goal was just to teach these kids to love writing and maybe even be good at it. So um, in, in terms of the opportunities for creativity, I would say it has to fit around those common assessments. So as creative as you could be using text that support that and, and arguing for or against that thing about teenagers and adolescents is they're young, they're inexperienced, but they're not stupid and they're not children and they have these thoughts that need to be explored. Um, they don't they can't be put in a box. They can't be set aside. They're not all the same. Uh, they need to be able to explore their different interests. They need to be able to find their own voice. They need to be able to tell their own stories. And that's something that in public school and most school, really, they're not allowed to do. You know, they have to follow the assignment and get through the assignment and get the grade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's there are opportunities for creativity, but not in terms of creating the assignment, more what you can do with the common assessments that are, have already been created. So students don't really have the freedom to kind of do something outside of that? Not outside of that assessment, no. How come there's not a creative writing course anymore? Just budget cuts and interests and, you know, all, all that stuff. So the nitty gritty of, uh, of the situation in the creative writing class, um, was basically during a routine peer review where the students work with each other, uh, a student read a fellow student's paper and it offended her. She told her, her guardian and the guardian called administration and that's how things basically started. They began an investigation of some sorts. That's the thing is I had no idea what they were looking for, first of all. I mean, I didn't, I, I'd been teaching the same thing, the same curriculum for eight years. And for about three weeks, I didn't even hear a phone call. They wouldn't respond to my emails. So when I was able to come back, I was able to come back on the condition that students could no longer participate in peer review. They could no longer share their work and, and that their work should be censored. Uh, they shouldn't write about certain topics. They didn't give me a list, like these are the things we don't want your students to write about, that, but that I should be more aware. There, there are, however, some teachers that would say, 
you know what, let's not go anywhere near the legalization of drugs, abortion, that kind of thing. And sometimes that's because we know that the students can't find good, solid, credible sources on those things, or there's too much sources for the students to try to sort through in the, the time constraints that we have or the lab resources that we have. Um, so I would say, t to answer your question very basically, that would be teacher discretion as to what topics are off limits. My, my absence, um, several of my students were questioned regarding my behavior in the classroom and whether I behaved appropriately. Um, the thing that, that was most confusing for me is that even after they said I could come back and I was teaching again, uh, they continued to question the students in my class. They would pull students out and ask them questions. And the students, maybe, you know, I don't know why, but they told me, it wasn't a secret, they said, they're asking questions about you. The people in the office, the secretaries, they, you know, people, I've worked there for several years. It's, you know, people trusted me. They didn't understand the situation either. So um, I would get, I would hear the rumors of what was going on, but I wouldn't hear anything from the actual administration uh, about what they were looking for. I never actually was able to sit down and have a conversation with the principal or the vice principal or anyone in HR. We never went over my lesson plans. Uh, there was never really uh, that conversation or that chance for me to explain myself. It was just, this is what happened. So now you have to do this. If you're not gonna do this, you have to quit. And I quit. But I don't regret the way I ran my classes. I don't regret the relationships I had with my students. I don't regret the fact that my students trusted me and told me things. Um, I don't regret any of that. So I don't feel like, other than the fact that I quit my job and I felt like I let down my students, I don't feel like as a teacher I did anything wrong. Oh, Captain, my Captain!